Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel. And today I am going to be delving into the second Bridgerton collection from Once Upon a Book Club. But before we get to that, speaking of books, I just wanted to thank all of you who are part of the Nobot Nook, which is our private Facebook group that goes along with this channel. And that is where we run the Book Nook, which is our book club within the Nobot Nook. We did our first selection, it was a great success, and we are currently planning our second second selection. So if you want to get involved in that, you have to join the Nobot Nook. I will leave a link for you in the description box below. But speaking of which, it was such a great success that to kind of keep everything a little bit more categorized, I'm going to be doing primarily book subscriptions on this channel now. And then I will have another channel where I'll be doing all of my other boxes, which is going to be lifestyle, jewelry, beauty, all of the other categories will be on that other new channel. And we'll make this more about the books. April Fools! Hopefully I tricked some of you. Don't worry Martha, it's not going to be primarily book subscriptions here. I'm still going to have a variety of boxes, but I just wanted to see if some of you guys were listening and paying attention and how many of you guys just skip ahead for my intro. Let's talk about the Bridgerton boxes though. So back I believe in 2020 is when Once Upon a Book Club announced the two boxes, the two collections that would have all eight of the Julie Quinn uh, Bridgerton books in them. They did their own special editions, which I thought was really cool. And just like all Once Upon a Book Club boxes, there would be gifts that went along with corresponding passages in those books. Now, many of you are familiar with the Bridgerton series, mostly because of the series that is on television. And I, like many of you, are I'm definitely looking forward to the next installment, season three, which is actually about book number four, because each of the books features one of the Bridgerton children. There are eight of them named alphabetically. The books, interestingly, are not chronological, so you have to kind of get this like Bridgerton timeline going in your head, but it is going to be the storyline of Colin and Penelope for season three on television. Um, but I have been really enjoying reading the later books, which feature mostly the younger children uh, that we haven't seen featured too much in the series, because sometimes when you have your brain already turned on to what characters look like from a television show, it's really hard to imagine them as anything else when you're reading. So I've gotten to be a little bit more creative with my imagination with these later books. Now this book box has the last four books of the series of eight. Each of them has two gifts to go along with, so a total of eight gifts. It is still currently available over on the Once Upon a Book Club website for $195. Now if you're like, why would I get this second box when the first box is no longer available? You can still get the first four books, just the books, without the gifts that were in box one for $120. The full second box is available for $195, but you can also get just the books again, just the box two books for $120, and they are really lovely editions. They're all different colors. They look lovely lined up on my shelf. It's very, it's a romance. It's kind of chiclet, but I kind of love the whole Regency area vibe of it, how uh, frivolous and silly and fun these books are. So I've really enjoyed uh, reading them and having this collection, even though it's not my typical kind of read. But let's just take a look at some of the other included items, which are very typical of Once Upon a Book Club, even their monthly boxes. By the way, I will leave a link and a code for you. It is just Noel 10 and that'll save you 10%. So we have our lovely uh, bookmark. Now, Lady Whistledown does not feature as much in the later books because we find out who Lady Whistledown is. So then that mystery is gone. What's really cool though, you guys, is we have Julia Quinn's signature on the back of this one. And it just says from Lady W's Society Papers, Dearest readers, it is this author's greatest pleasure to introduce the entire ton to the stunning and highly anticipated Bridgerton collection by Once Upon a Book Club. I must caution you, do not let your excitement overtake your senses. While these gifts may beckon to you, this author must advise you to not unwrap these packages until you arrive at the corresponding page. Fear not, for this author has included reminders inside each book at the exact moment each gift may be opened. I welcome you to find a secluded reading nook and pour yourself a cup of tea as you embark on a series of romantic journeys along the Bridgerton family. As always, happy reading. And then of course we have our quote card as a staple of a Once Upon a Book Club box. And she wasn't the sort to tolerate an unhappy life. She would, and she wasn't the sort to tolerate an unhappy life. She would simply have to make certain that hers was anything but. So very simple with that little cameo. And then of course we have our guide. Now in the first box, we actually had a nice interview with Julia Quinn. In this case, we just have some, uh, some trivia, which is kind of fun. For example, how old was Lord Bridgerton when he died of a bee sting? 
40, 38, 58, or 47? It's a very sad answer, everyone. Um, how to host the perfect Bridgerton tea party, of course, which is fun. You have to have your scones. And then, of course, on the back we have compare and contrast book versus TV show. There are so many differences and a few similarities. So that was kind of fun in terms of our extras, but let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, you guys, I have to show you the size of the box. So this is box number two. It is huge, it is hefty, it's pretty thick. And then let me compare it to box number one, which was also, I thought, pretty huge and hefty, but comparatively, much, much smaller, right? So I'm very excited to finally be getting into this giant box and uh, getting to put the books on my shelf as well as using some of the gifts. But let's talk about this one, which is To Sir Philip With Love. Now this is uh, Eloise's story. And again, the books are not chronological, so you have to kind of keep track um, and the hints that she drops to help you remember uh, what, what's happened when and what hasn't happened yet. Because a lot of the times we've already heard about things well in advance or vice versa. So of course, this is Eloise and of course, Sir Philip, who they have a very interesting romance, very different from many of the other Bridgertons. Here's a nice picture of Julia Quinn on the inside. And again, we have two gifts and I will show them to you. This one is to Sir Philip with love, page 105, lovely wrapping paper. And this one is to Sir Philip with love, page 15. And of course, the name of this uh, novel comes from the fact that they have sort of an epistolary love at first. They learn to know one another through letters for a good year before they actually meet. So when you come across the page that you are meant to open the gift with, they get that little sticky note. So let me just remind myself. So sadly, uh, Sir Philip uh, was a widower. Uh, he had a very sad wife, but he has two lovely children who are quite rambunctious. They are twins. He sighed, slumping in his seat. He needed a wife. Almost any wife would do. He didn't care what she looked like. He didn't care if she had money. He didn't care if she could do sums in her head or speak French or even ride a horse. She just had to be happy. Was that so much to want in a wife? A smile at least once a day? Maybe even the sound of her laughter? And she had to love his children, or at least pretend so well that they never knew the difference. It wasn't so much to ask for, was it? Sir Philip... Philip looked up, cursing himself for having left his study door slightly ajar. Miles Carter, his secretary, was poking his head in. What is it? A letter, sir, Miles said, walking forward to hand him an envelope from London. Philip looked down at the envelope in his hand, his brows rising at the obviously feminine slant to the handwriting. He dismissed Miles with a nod, then picked up his letter opener and slid it under the wax. A single sheet of paper slipped out. Philip rubbed it between his fingers. High quality. Expensive. Heavy, too. A clear sign that the sender need not economize to reduce franking costs. Then he turned it over and read. Number 5, Bruton Street, London. Sir Philip Crane, I am writing to express my condolences on the loss of your wife, my dear cousin Marina. Although it has been many years since I last saw Marina, I remember her fondly and was deeply saddened to hear of her passing. Please do not hesitate to write if there's anything I can do to ease your pain at this difficult time. Yours, Miss Eloise Bridgerton. Philip rubbed his eyes. Bridgerton. Bridgerton. Did Marina have Bridgerton cousins? She must have done if one of them was sending him a letter. And thus their romance begins. So in this lovely box, we have not Eloise's uh, letter, of course, which you guys know I wouldn't like that because I don't like paper gifts. We have this lovely letter opener slash weapon. So it's not as heavy as it looks, but it is a nice metal letter, letter opener, which will certainly do the trick. And since I am trying to be better about actually writing letters and cards this year, I think that will go nicely with my other stationery. Now we have our second gift for this book. By the way, I'm not really giving any spoilers away because uh, the passages that I'm reading, I mean, we already kind of know that there's happy endings with these books, but you don't necessarily find out too much from the passages that I'm reading. Sometimes the passage comes at the end of a page and they have like a little mini sticky note like that. So they are visiting Philip's greenhouse because he is a botanist. So Philip often visited his, gr his greenhouse at night, toiling by the light of a lantern where he could, when he could not sleep or before he'd been widowed to keep him busy so that he would not consider entering Marina's bedchamber. But he had never asked anyone to accompany him in the dark. Even during the day, he almost always worked alone. Now he was seeing it all through Eloise's eyes, the magic in the way the pearlescent moonlight threw shadows across the leaves and fronds. During the day, a walk through the greenhouse wasn't so very different from a walk through any wooded area in, in England, with the exception of the odd rare fern or imported bromeliad. 
But now, with the cloak of night playing tricks on the eyes, it was as if they were in some secret hidden jungle, with magic and surprise lurking around every corner. What is this? Eloise asked, peering down at eight small clay pots arranged in a line across his workbench. Philip walked to her side, absurdly pleased that she seemed truly curious. Most people just feigned interest or didn't e even bother to pretend and made a quick escape. It's an experiment I've been working on, he said, with peas. The kind we eat? Yes, I'm trying to develop a strain that will grow fatter in the pod. She peered down at the pots. Nothing was sprouting yet. He'd only planted the seeds a week ago. How curious, she murmured. I had no idea one could do that. I have no idea if one can, he admitted. I've been trying for a year. With no success? How very frustrating. I've had some success, he admitted, just not as much as I'd like. So very cute there, bonding over his love of plants and him being a scientist. So that is our second one. I was hoping we'd get like a bromeliad, but <laughs> seeing as it took me like a year and a half to get around to my first box. This is much better that I've set this goal of getting through uh, this box with two books per month. So here it is. You can see they made the box. It is Sir Philip's Seed Starter Kit. So I kind of love this and it's actually perfect that I am of course opening this in the spring. So this is, it's quite the kit too. There's quite a few items to it. So let me pull it out. First of all, we have the instructions for Sir Philip's Seed Starter Kit, which is cute. Then we have these nice little pots, right, that you can actually put into bigger soil eventually when the pot uh, plant gets big enough. These are the like sod or the uh, soil, the little discs that you can use. And then we have our little seed packets which came in this cute little envelope. And then we have different ones. We have, let's see, broccoli, snap peas, and they do tell us, you know, how deep to put the seeds, carrots, tomatoes, and onions. And then we also have the little matching planter signs to go along with, which I thought was really, really cute. So there's our broccoli and our onion and the rest. So we got the little signs. We got five different packets with five different vegetables. We got five different pots and five different little soil pods, which I thought was a really cute little kit to include in this box. So lots of things, lots of happy planting. Even I will give it a shot maybe in my windowsill or pass it on to someone else with a nice green thumb. But I did think these little wood, uh, sort of wood burned uh, signs were really, really cute. All right, you guys, let's move on to When He Was Wicked, which is the story of Francesca, which is the one that we don't see much of in the series, and we don't see much of her anyway, because she's always off in Scotland, and then we have learned from the other books that sadly, she was widowed at a very young age after just two years of marriage. So you're like, okay, well, she's already had that love story, and we don't hear much about that love story, just enough uh, to give this the background, but of course, she winds up falling in love with the cousin because it's not of, of her husband, of her late husband, because it's not so big of a deal back then, I suppose, to uh, wind up with that. But they both have to take some time to admit it, that uh, they are actually in love and take some time apart. So after, the, uh, after John dies, uh, Michael, who winds up being her new husband, goes away to India for a good four years because he has been in love with Francesca the whole time and he's just like, I have to get this woman out of my head. He comes back just in time for her to be past mourning and putting herself back out on the market for the season and he's like, nobody else can have her but me and they both have to kind of like realize that that is the case. So our first gift is on page 70. It came in this cute little drawstring bag. So she is, so they have a place in Scotland and they have a place in London. They're all named the same thing, which is very confusing, but uh, she has decided to go back to Kilmartin House in London to prepare for the season to put herself out there and maybe find a husband because she really, really wants children. So it says, the library. That was it. It was small and cozy, and if Francesca shut the door, a fire in its grate would keep the room nice and toasty. Furthermore, there was a settee on which she should lie, which she could lie. It was small, but then again, so was she, and it couldn't possibly be any worse than freezing to death in her bedroom. Her decision made, Francesca leapt out of bed and dashed through the cold night air to her night robe, which was lying across the back of a chair. It wasn't nearly warm enough. Francesca hadn't thought to need anything bulkier, but it was better than nothing, and she thought rather stoically beggars couldn't be choosers, especially when their toes were falling off with cold. She hurried downstairs, her heavy wool socks slipping and sliding on the polished steps. She tumbled down the last two, thankfully landing on her feet, then ran along the runner carpet to the library. 
Fire, 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 she murmured to, mumbled to herself. She'd ring for someone just as soon as she got to the library. They'd have a blaze roaring in no time. She'd regain feeling in her nose, her fingertips would lose that sickly blue color, and she pushed open the door. A short staccato scream hurled itself across her lips. There was already a fire in the grate and a man standing in front of it, idly warming his hands. Francesca reached wildly for something, anything that she might use as a weapon. And then he turned. Michael? She hadn't known he'd be in London. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so, of course, he returns from India at the exact same time because he tried writing to her while he was gone, but she never wrote back uh, because, you know, she didn't want to. She wanted to honor her husband and be in proper mourning. And you know, secretly, she probably loved him the whole time, too, because it was like her best friend. So, yes, you're hearing crinkling because I'm removing these little sockies from their packaging which i hadn't done once before but let me see if i can get this unhooked of course so we have some special once upon a book club polyester socks with washing instructions and so they are a pale blue to go along with our boxes with this nice little cameo i guess i'm not sure who this is supposed to be necessarily um the lady is quite the treasure do not do try not to bungle it up that's so true with all the ladies. So, all right. So that was our uh, first gift. And then, you guys, this is very intriguing. For our second When He Was Wicked gift for page 320. So we went all the way from page 70 all the way to 320. We have a two-part box. So this is fun. So the little one is two of two. And the first one is one of two. So let me go all the way to page 320, which I think by that time they have declared their love or at least uh, expressed it physically because, you know, they are not tea, those Bridgertons. Although Michael's not a Bridgerton, but he, uh, he knows that she is honorable, so if he can kind of coerce her into expressing her love for him, then uh, she will have to marry him, because for whatever reason, she balks at it. So it says, Why are you doing this? She finally burst out. Doing what? Being so nice to me. His brows lifted. Shouldn't I be? No, I shouldn't be nice. It wasn't a question, as he said it, rather a amused statement. That's not what I meant, she said, shaking her head. He befuddled her, and she hated it. There was nothing she valued more than a cool and clear head, and Michael had managed to steal that from her with a single kiss. And then he'd done much more. So much more. She was never going to be the same. She was never going to be sane. You look distressed, he said. She wanted to strangle him. He cocked his head and smiled. She wanted to kiss him. He held up the teapot. More? God, yes, that was the problem. Francesca. She wanted to jump across the table and onto his lap. Are you quite all right? It was growing difficult to breathe. Franny. Every time he spoke, every time he moved his mouth, even just to breathe, her eyes settled on his lips. She felt herself licking her own. And she knew that he knew, with all of his experience, all of his seductive prowess, exactly what she was feeling. So yes, he has compromised her a bit to convince her that, you know, her late husband would be okay with it. And she eventually realizes that as well. So there's a couple pieces to this. So I'm pulling it out. Uh, it's a very fragile item, so I'm glad that it made it in its big box. So we have this beautiful glass teapot. Yes, indeed. And then there is this lovely pink. Of course, it's pink. I was like, why couldn't we go with the blue theme? Then it has this nice little diffuser. So there are the holes, and you set that right in there. And then, whoop, that was loud sorry guys there is this cute little lid so you can actually see the color of your tea and determine when it is going to be uh, dark enough or strong enough for you so very very cute little teapot I just wish that they had done it in plain white or in blue it didn't have to be quite so frilly and so pink and then what do you imagine is our part two I was like maybe we'll get a cute clear um, teacup but no it is not it kind of adds to the set though I will say that um, and this is something very unique that I have gotten teapots I've gotten teacups I love getting teacups in boxes book boxes especially this to me cheapens it a little bit in all honesty but it is lovely so first I was like is this an ashtray <laughs> because it's got these little notches like an old-school ashtray and then I was like what's with the holes this is weird and then I realized you're supposed to put a little votive candle in there and then this goes right on top to keep your tea warm so it is like a 
you know, a tea warmer, essentially. It's not the best fit in there. It's a little slippy, so you'd want to be careful with it because it is a glass. What I don't like, I don't mind this like frilly floral pattern on there. What I don't like, this is the part that I don't like besides it being pink. It says, spill the tea. Like, really? They didn't need to put that on there to be cheeky because that, you know, makes it even more modern, even though there's a lot of anachronisms in the Bridgerton books. Like, but come on. I was like, really? So frilly pink. I love the idea of having the tea warmer and the diffuser and the teapot. I think that's all really special, but I wish they had just done the pattern all the way around instead of spill the tea. And of course, these are vents so that your candle doesn't blow out once you have the teapot on top. It's a lovely idea. I like the ceramic. I would have been happy with just the glass teapot in all honesty, although this is probably not fire safe. So that's why they're having you do it on a like lower flame than on your actual stove top, for example, like the glass teapot I have is stove safe. Um, so I don't think this one necessarily is. I thought it was lovely. I like when they do custom items for boxes, but I just wish it didn't say spill the tea. But I did really enjoy both of these books. I hope that their stories get to be uh, represented on the television. You guys, let me know in the comments below what is your favorite Bridgerton book, or if you haven't read the books, who is your favorite Bridgerton sibling? Who's your favorite Bridgerton child between, you know, Anthony, Benedict, Colin, Daphne, Eloise, Francesca, almost forgot, Hyacinth, and Gregory. Who is your favorite? I would love to know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you appreciate it, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you all soon in my next unboxing.